here is part two of what we are carrying with us for first aid on our sailboat. Uh, if you'd like to check out part one, click here and uh, you can check that out. Welcome to Sailing Zoe. We are a family of four who bought a salvage catamaran sailboat. We are on a mission to fix it up and sail the world. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, or join our Patreon group and welcome aboard. Now we're getting into some of the, some of the stuff that I really, I'm, I'm excited about. So an AED, we bought this and when we did, I did not realize it did not come with the battery and it did not mm -hmm. come with the little pat patches. This one also has an attachment, so it will work on children. You wanna make sure if you have children that you get that attachment. Okay, I will say this is an easy get. It's gonna cost a total of 750. Okay, well, it's a kind of expensive, but it is necessary part of, of CPR. It literally walks you through exactly how to do it. It talks to you. It's super easy to use if you take a first aid, Class, you will get trained on this. You should have this because this is an easy, easy, easy life-saving tool. Entertainment purposes only, consult your doctor. Chest compressions will not restart a heart. Chest compressions Just will circulate the, blood. circulate the blood. This restarts the heart. We've had an electric shock in the boat, lightning strike, hypothermia, drowning situation, heart attack. If you want to have more life-saving measures, then this is an easy one. The big orange bag. You don't need necessarily a big orange bag. I was debating on using one of our many things that we're selling, but I, I like the fact that it's big and orange and I can just tell somebody, grab the emergency bag. Well, and it's organized. It's designed to like be organized yeah. this way. The bag itself was 25 bucks. Anything that is particularly dangerous, it's gonna be in this pouch. This pouch is gonna have a zip, a zip tie to it. So when you open this, if you need it, you have access to scissors right here. You can cut the zip tie and then full access to everything. So here you have your gauze. I have four rolled gauzes, Xenoform, um, larger trauma dressing. Um, and then this is gauze with what's called a hemostatic agent, which helps stop the bleeding quickly. So all trauma along with some additional tape is located here in a very easily accessible uh, format. On this side, you have additional trauma stuff to close the wound. So the three ways is super glue. Again, entertainment purposes only would be fine to use to close a wound. Steri strips or butterfly bandages, those types of things um, are for like larger cuts as well. And then the staple gun. Entertainment purposes only. There's a skill set in suturing yeah. of hitting, not hitting certain nerves and how to do it versus a staple gun, pinch, staple. Um, a lot of YouTube videos are gonna show you how to do it. This staple gun also comes with a staple gun, a staple remover. The staples, when they go in, not just go in, down and in, but they kind of curve in. Mm -hmm. So you can't just rip them straight out. All this is depending on how big your wound is. Then we come over to addressing certain injuries. I have three of these cold packs. Then I've got iodine and I have isopropyl alcohol. They are both used to clean the injured area. A saline solution, basically sterilized water to like, if we need to uh, clean out a wound. This is an older EpiPen. Again, we take that because um, our son can go into anaphylaxis. And EpiPen's just kind of nice to have as well. Are you gonna go into anaphylaxis if you get stung by a jelly, uh, jellyfish? I don't know, but we've got some sort of level of allergy treatment that is much more extreme than just Benadryl. And then tools, the stethoscope. Blood pressure cuff, otoscope, it's to look in, check the eardrum, check for infection in the ear. Or throat, but it's typically used Odo's ear. It's specifically used for ears, but. A uh, tourniquet. If you can't stop the bleeding, um, you have to stop bleeding. And so a tourniquet gonna, um, is gonna get that done for you. Last one in this section is the Sam Splint semi-rigid formable you piece guys, of steel wrapped in foam. It's metal, so if you need to make like a gutter splint for the arm, you put it on there and then you bandage it on if you broke your wrist or something. Scissors to get clothing off quickly as needed. And then, oh yeah, this, is, this has the needle. Um, if you get like a nemothorax, so basically if you get a collapsed lung, 
So I fall. Releases the air. If I fall off the mast for some reason, and I have a collapsed lung, and I there's pressure building up in my lungs, Christy can release the pressure by stabbing me through the rib cage uh, with this, and it will release the pressure. A little bit more training is. <laughs> What we don't have in here that would be good is like a pen of some sort, it's like a permanent marker. Oh, sure. Just to mark like infections and stuff. It's not major, but just so we don't have to worry about finding it. So, in this side, this is all of my oxygen and IV stuff. Medical grade oxygen. Yeah. This is an M60 size tank. It's a little larger than your typical scuba tank, but it's not too much taller. That will give around two days worth of oxygen flow. Oxygen is critical in fighting shock. So if there's blood loss, you want to stop the bleed and then any remaining blood that they have is well oxygenated. I'm not going to go through the whole process of how to use oxygen. You got to get a tank, you got to get a, a way that it comes out of the tank using regulators and then the tubes that come into, into the individual. These are things that really you should be, if you want to go this route, you should be talking to your doctor, you should be, uh, you should be getting trained on it. Those are nasal, uh, somebody can't breathe. You can put it through the nose to the throat. And that maintains the airway. Uh, we have different sizes for kids and for adults. Just to clear the airway? Uh, more air jumps, so these are to keep the throat open. It's down the throat ah, and keeps the, keeps the airway open. None of this is to treat this on our own without a doctor. No, uh, just to try to save them. Just to try, try to, to save them. Try to get them where they can get out. Yeah keep them to pack an evac. This is the IV system. Again, I'm not gonna go over the details of how to use how to use an IV system. In a future video, um, I'm gonna give myself an IV and uh, I'll be putting on the oxygen as well. I wanna make sure that I know how to use this and I'm comfortable using it um, before it gets to an emergency situation. Talk to your doctor about this. Uh, there are courses that you can take. Yep. If, if we're to the point where we are administering an IV to somebody, we are contacting a medical professional. We will ideally be guided on using this stuff properly. This stuff is gonna be um, some of the more heavier medications that we do not want the kids or anybody to access. Hence, this will be zip tied. Uh, activated charcoal, which is for poison treatment. Albuterol and inhaler. My soap notes, notepad. Keep track of what, what's going on with the patient. Flashlight. Antibiotics. Talk to your doctor about this. Uh, my older brother had his appendix burst and uh, nearly died from that. Let's say we're going through the Pacific crossing. We're halfway across the ocean and one of our kids gets uh, pain in the lower right abdomen. Um, and they're showing severe signs of an appendicitis and, and, and what do you do? And literally I was like, okay, do we go on the sat phone and, and take out the scalpel? And I mean, if, if our kids are going to die, I'm going to do something. And, and, you know, do you try to remove this? And the answer is, and again, educational purposes only consult your physician. Uh, answer is no. Answer is no. But what you can do is give them oxygen, yep. keep them warm keep them hydrated and, and give, them give them antibiotics. So in the six days at most, ideally, that it's gonna take you to get to advanced medical care, the infection is is not spreading. You're, it's not gonna spread as fast. It's probably you, gonna spread, but not as fast. In a remote setting for first response of medical care, it's a risk versus reward mm -hmm. ratio. Are you creating a greater level of danger if you try to operate on the individual? Yes. In my mind, and from the information that I've received, it's going to be a lot greater chance for survival than doing surgery in a male yeah. fashion. So that's just a prescription strength eye drops. If there's a really bad irritation, so our son has had a couple recently. This is just like ibuprofen for the eyes. Anti-inflammatory helps with pain. This is silver that you can put on the burn area. It's common, to, it's good to put on burns. The last one is narcotic. A lot of times doctors are not gonna want to prescribe a narcotic. Pain management beyond ibuprofen and Tylenol 
uh, requires something in, in addition, and that is a narcotic. There will be some uh, countries you may go into where you may have to get rid of this. Well, and I think of also like, if there's a severe burn that somebody has, um, and that's, that's a likelihood on a boat, um, and yeah. you've got to clean that wound, and all you got is Tylenol as pain management, cleaning that wound fully is, it, it, it honestly may not even occur. Like you, you may not be able to get that patient to hold still. Double check all of this, but our insurance will take care of, you know, a lot of the, the medical expenses awesome. and, and stuff like that. We need to be able to get to the medical site. If you use Dan, the diver something network, again, check me on this. You got to get to the place of of treatment on your own, mm -hmm. that they're not going to pick you up from a remote island and get you to a hospital. They that's that's on you. If the if the treatment facility that you're at mm -hmm. is not sufficient enough to treat you, then the Divers Association Network will pay for the transportation from treatment facility to an advanced treatment facility. And so that's really where this stuff comes in is getting to the first medical treatment facility that we can. If people find feel like I'm we are incorrect in any of this, comment below yeah. and uh, we'll be monitoring the comments and I think it could be should be a good thread of what to take, what not to take. There are some things that I forgot to mention that we'll be carrying in our first aid pack. One is a uh, soft, uh, stretchy elastic bandage, the kind that you would uh, be able to wrap around somebody and maybe hold an ice pack with. Two in our emergency bag will be Narcan, N-A-R-C-A-N. And this can be used to reverse an opioid overdose. Now, because we're gonna have uh, an opioid-based uh, narcotic for painkiller on board, we're gonna have this item with us. Not just in case there's some sort of uh, accident with the medicine, but also if you give somebody an opioid that is uh, new to a person, what might seem appropriate for their body can vary. So it, it's uh, overdosing is actually extremely possible. So if you are carrying an opioid for painkiller, having an opioid antidote uh, is something that you should strongly consider. Three, uh, we'll also be carrying a scalpel, uh, not to do surgery with, uh, but in order to do uh, any precision cut, a scalpel is a cheap and essential tool. We hope you've enjoyed part two of our first aid supply series. If you think others would like this, please share. And remember, please do not take anything you've heard as advice. This is entertainment or at best, a starting point for you to do your own research. Your safety is always your responsibility.